Hello there, welcome to the start of this Unity tutorial series where I'm going to be teaching you how to make a VR game. Uh, we're going to try and, we're going to start off with just overall interaction, then, I'm, I'm coming up with this on the fly, uh, by the way, but we're going to go overall interaction, how you can use Unity overall with the XR toolkit, uh, and then go on to optimization and how to get a build for Quest, Oculus Quest uh, or Steam VR or anything like that. So uh, we're just going to hop straight in. Right, to start off, we're just going to open up Unity. Uh, we're, I'm on version 2020.3.14 F1, but any version 2019.3 and above, I think, should be fine. So uh, we're just going to go, uh, I'm going to call it Survival XR Tutorial. I'm going to create. Now once you've loaded up Unity, we're just going to start off uh, straight away, head up to Window, and then Package Manager. Now, for most of my projects, I actually use um, uh, an asset I got off the asset store, but I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, we're going to head straight to the Unity registry and scroll all the way down to XR Plugin Management. Once that's all installed, we're going to head up to Edit, Project Settings, and this is where you kind of just choose what you want. Uh, I'd recommend OpenXR if you want to target all platforms, but I'm just going to go with Oculus to make my life easier. If you go with OpenXR, And if you also want to uh, target Oculus Quest, you're going to want to go with Oculus. Now that we've, uh, we've got that set up, I'm going to start by just adding a plane into the world. This will be our floor. And I'm going to make a new material for it using this checkerboard, which I always do because, I don't know, it just looks nice. Uh, you're also going to want to delete your main camera from the scene. This would uh, mess stuff up. There's one thing I forgot to install, which you're going to need to go back to the package manager, open up advanced project settings and enable preview packages. You're going to want to install the XR Interaction Toolkit. You'll get this notification pop up. You're just going to want to click yes. It will restart your Unity. For this one, you just want to go to click no thanks. It's not important. We're going to just add the XR Origin. And I'm going to set the tracking mode to floor. This will make it so that the floor that your player sets in their boundaries will be the floor. I'm also going to add a device based direct interactor we're going to duplicate that we're going to call this right hand interactor we're also going to go left hand interactor now for the left hand one you're going to change control mode to left hand and for these two i'm just going to add a cube set to 0.1.1.1 that was really sm oh no this is really far away <laughs> just going to want to reset the uh the origin of this xr origin here and i'm going to copy the cube into this one too now you will want to change both of these colliders to is trigger or overall remove them it's this is just the visuals for the hands these interactors do it themselves so there's two different interactors in the XR toolkit. There's the direct interactor, which we're using here, and there's also the ray interactor. Now, the ray interactor is what you want to use in your menu scenes. So this will be what you use in your menus to interact with uh, UI elements. Uh, you can also use it as a way to handle like force grabbing, but uh, we'll touch on that later. We also noticed that the uh, XR Interaction Manager was added when you added these uh, direct interactors. That just handles all the interactions. Make sure you have that in your scene before you uh, continue. Next thing I'm going to set up, I'm going to grab a cube. Go and place that over here. Duplicate and make a smaller cube. And we're going to add the XR Grab Interactable component to this. Now, this will quite simply let you grab this component. Um, I'm going to put the floor on that as well, just to make it easier to see. Uh, you've got a bunch of settings here. Have a play around. Uh, they're pretty simple, really. Uh, colliders is something I want to touch on, but I'll do that later. Now, there's three different types of movement types. Uh, I recommend sticking with instantaneous. That's the one that will make it feel like you are just holding something. Kinematic will use the rigid body bit in a kinematic fashion, and velocity tracking will completely use physics to track the, the grabbable to the direct interactor that's grabbing it. Now, I have got the Oculus Quest 2 here plugged in to my computer on Oculus Link. That's how I'm going to be testing this. Um, there's multiple other ways. I, I'll leave a few references in the description on how you can test. 
uh, using, for example, uh, virtual desktop or just another headset entirely. Uh, you'll want to make sure that when you're testing in your Oculus app, you go to settings, general, and turn on unknown sources. Otherwise, you will not be able to load up the Unity game. Or at least you couldn't last time I tested this. So uh, I'm going to put on this headset now and hop in. I turned off this headset. And as you can see, we are now in the game. I have this cube connected to my hand. I only have one hand, as you can see. And that's a good start. I seem to have placed the player a bit too far, so I'm just going to uh, move where I'm stood. I don't recommend doing this. It's uh, very stressful. <laughs> um, and if we now try and grab this, this object, I'm still too far. <laughs> If we try and grab this object, you will see that uh, it snaps to our hand. We can throw it around. If we hold grip and get close, it will also kind of just instantly attach. Um, obviously, it doesn't have physics. If you wanted physics, that's when you would use, as I said, velocity tracking. And now, as you can see, it can go th won't go through things that it hits but uh your hand or the rotation is also kind of delayed it's i don't recommend it but uh it works one small thing if you are going to use velocity tracking i recommend going to your physics no going to your time and changing your fixed time step to one divided by whatever the refresh rate of your headset is going to be or your game so for example one over 90 if we now change this to velocity tracking And grab our object again. There is a noticeable improvement in, it, in how it actually reacts to the world. So uh, those are just two small things that are, are nice to have. They're not necessary, but uh, can be can be nice. Now, before we move on to the uh, more artistic side of this, I'm going to show you how to set up the locomotion system. So you just want to cl right click on your XR origin, go to XR, and then device based locomotion system. Now here you're just going to want to go X origin, pretty simple, drag that in and you can mess with these settings. These are things that I, I'll teach you how to set up with the UI but for now you've got these turn amount, this will be for the snap rotation. Um, there's also a smooth or continuous turn provider I believe, yeah. uh, which if you prefer that to snap turn you can use that. Uh, and this turn speed you can change again in the script uh, and the controller that controls it you just drag that in nice and simple click play really quickly I've got my left hand too now but with our right as you can see uh, I'm using this to turn and the left hand is doing nothing and I know why no I don't Ah, that have, I've worked it out. Uh, in the locomotion system, you're going to want to add a continuous move provider device base. Again, drag the locomotion system in, move speed and stuff. That's all stuff you can mess about with. Uh, and again, the controller you want to control it. So, say you're right handed, you probably want the left hand to do the movement, left handed, you want the right hand. You know, you can change that. And then the forward source, this is whether you want it to, say for example, move based on the main camera. And you want gravity application mode to be immediately so the gravity is always there. Uh, next you want the character controller driver. We'll need to put your move provider in here. And add a character controller with a height of 1. Radius of probably 0.1-ish. 0.15 is usually my go-to. So uh, there was a slight issue, so I've gone and removed the character controller from the locomotion system and added it to the actual XR origin, just so that as you see when we load up. The character controller is now moving 
based on where our player is. So, say I... Uh, this is how you collide with the world, by the way. So, say I started moving my head forward, it would push me back. But if I move my head back, I can walk further forward. I know I look really stupid right now, but you got to demonstrate somehow, right? One more thing before we, uh, we end off this episode here. Uh, you can change the size of... So, if we head into the game really quick. You'll see that it's like actually really hard to grab these, unless you have to basically touch it to grab it, which can be a bit annoying. So, what we're going to do is go into our right hand and left hand interactors. We're going to go into our left hand and right hand interactors, and we're going to change the radius. So, I usually go with about 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Uh, this just makes it easier for the player to grab things. So to now head into the headset. You'll see that we can grab things from a lot closer. Which just feels a lot nicer for the player. Maybe not in terms of immersion, but in terms of feeling like they are who they're playing in this game. Now, next episode, we're going to work on some of the assets for the game and giving the player some hands instead of just these uh, basic cubes. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.